Death is a dish best served cold, especially to a three-year-old on Film Dark Reviews. I'm Alan Ng, I'm Azarna Kid, and today we review The Place of No Words. Where do we go when we die? That's the question posed by to the parents by their three-year-old son as a young boy's father is losing his fight with cancer. Uh, the film moves between the authentic real world and the fantasy realm to prepare him and explain the harsh realities of death. Boy, what a heavy subject. Written and directed by Mark Weber, stars Mark Weber, Bodie Palmer, and Nicole Elizabeth Berger. Um, I got to tell you, this is the third movie about death that I've seen in the last two weeks, and I'm getting super depressed. Um, Sorna, what did you think of The Place of No Words? Did this did this movie depress you? You know, you know that's that's an interesting point. Um, you know, it's it's weird, but I, I think these last three movies I saw, Ms. White Light being one of them, it's the subject matter of dying and death. You know, it I think it hits people. It will hit people differently um, based on where they are with that subject. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I had seen this movie in the twenties you know, when I was in my twenties. Uh, I think I would have a different perspective on it than I do today. Um, you know, cause I'm getting to that age where, you know, people I know, friends, family are, are passing away. And so I, I'm now at that time where I'm much more reflective about it than I was, you know, 30 years ago. You know, I cried. Yeah. <laughs> in this film. But, but the thing is, Alan is, this was such a beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. I, I cried not because it was about death, but because I felt like the love just poured out of this film. I, I felt like the, the love that these parents have for this little boy and in wanting to make him understand what death is all about. And, and it's done in multiple levels of reality of, of them playing and creating these fantasy worlds that are, you know, slight sort of like Game of Thrones meets uh, where the wild things are. Um, and uh, I was watching this and not always quite like understanding where it was going, yeah. what was going on, but I just felt like I didn't need to understand it. I just needed to just see the love and yeah. I, it just, it just made me cry. Yeah, you know, I would I would agree with you. Um, it is a beautiful movie, and and uh, to add to it, it's an independent film. There's not there's not a lot of money uh, that this movie had, and so they were able to create um, characters. Uh, uh, they were they're on some amazing locations. Um, I even saw that they thanked the Jim Henson Company, so I think he helped them. They they helped them with with the puppets. Uh, with the puppets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it is an emotional movie. And I think that's why, you know, I, I just brought it up before. It's just, I think now at this time of my life, um, these subjects are hitting me a lot more emotionally and films like this are just really tapping into it. You know, it, you know, I, I don't want to say I'm being manipulated by the movie because I think I'm being cynical at that point and maybe that's a self-defense on my part, but um yeah, you know, there's there's an emotional fight that that I had through this with with my own self. There, and, there was something lyrical though about this. Absolutely, film, you know. Yeah. Um, and when I was watching the little boy Bodhi, I kept thinking, "Gosh, I, I feel like I'm I, I'm having the same feeling about watching this kid as I did when I first saw Dakota Fanning and I Am Sam with Sean Penn. Mm -hmm. This like." totally adorable kid that is you just want to just pick him up and just kiss him and hug him and the way he is just loving on his parents is just beautiful and you're just like how did this happen so i did a little bit of research and the mother and the father and the 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 uh, matt weber who played yeah. the father is married to Teresa Palmer, oh. her mother, and Bodie is their child, who's real <laughs> Bodie. Well, there so you go. They yeah. were able to 
somehow create this play thing where I'm sure talk about death and all that stuff was done separate without even the kid realizing that he was in a movie that was actually narrative. They probably took him out to play every morning and just had a camera. Yeah. But um, but that's how that's how this was done. And then I looked at Mark Weber's credits and and he's done about five films. He's an actor. He was in Scott Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. um, but but this is this was like a a family labor of love. Um, the two the couple that that's featured in the film as someone that kind of like they're friends, like they're a husband and wife uh, yeah. in real life. And so there's just there was just this. It's like a home movie quality on a feature film level that just poured all this natural love into it. And yeah. And that's how that's how it came to be. It mm -hmm. I was astounded by that. Yeah, let me let me say something about Bodie Palmer. I mean, I I love movies where kids are kids. They're not they're not played. You know that that this three year old acts just like a three year old. I, yeah. I I reviewed a movie a long time ago and I can't remember it. It's like uh, the the title is a a year. And it just has these two girls. The entire movie is these two girls, a three and a five-year-old. And we're following, they're acting like three and five-year-olds. And what I like about it is the fact that the, Bodhi is not, um, you mentioned her, but Dakota Fanning, nor is he Haley Joel Osment. He's just yeah. a normal kid without this kind of um, ma mature depth that those two actors have. I mean, I have a kid of my own, and she has about as much emotional depth as a puddle of water. Stop that. <laughs> I understand. There's a rawness that you get yeah. uh, in, in, in letting a kid be a kid. They're not precocious. They're not Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. They're not, yeah. they're not stage managed. There was nothing. This was not stage managed at all. Uh, but, but, but how great uh, of a memory. I, I, I almost feel like to me, I'm just happy for this family that they have this amazing moment in time. Like it's, this film is so like ephemeral, like six months later, Bodhi would have been a completely different kid in his growth. And this movie would not have been possible to make in the way that it was made because of his growth, uh, mm -hmm. because it grows so fast. So they, they caught this moment in time. They caught this innocence. They worked around his natural self and created a story about a father who was terminally ill. Um, and yeah. well, I think the point you're making is this movie could only be made at this point in time. Yes. For for the filmmakers that yeah. you know, if they had waited a year or. Yeah, if they had waited a year or two, or if they had told it was with a completely different t cast, you would not have gotten the great performances, no. and the great story that that we get in this movie. Yeah, and and to me, this the whole aspect of how this came about just made it so special and so beautiful and really worth your time to check yeah. it out. Because as you said, everyone has a different um, concept of death, and as a mother, death. The, the concept of death uh, and my experiences with death were very would be very different if I didn't have kids. Um, it's just and and in this capacity, this these, this is a family and that are that they're thinking like, what happens when the dad is gone? Like it's a three year old boy who has no clue that this wonderful time he's sharing with his father, who already is not feeling well, at some point that moment is going to be gone. Yeah, and his father will not be there. And uh, yeah. I mean, it hits on this idea of parents uh, essentially preparing their child for, you know, a big new chapter in their life without without their father, without father. Yeah. And they're yeah. trying, trying to explain stuff to him slightly and lightly. And you see, like, he doesn't have an interest. You know, he's like just ready mm -hmm. to get the next to find the next freak -a fairy and, you know, all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. And um Oh God, he was so innocent. He was just so innocent. And just his affections for his dad and his mom were just so, so beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I was smitten with this family. Plus yeah. they're all beautiful on top of that. You know, they're all beautiful people, but not in this like Hollywood way. Like the movie's not beautiful in a way that's like, you know, made to look beautiful. It's just, it's just this family that's, you know, easy on the eyes on top of everything else. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you know, this is this is a, a film like this is why Film Thread exists. You know, it's it's truly independent because there's no way a, a big studio is gonna was gonna yeah. fund this or, or give them the freedom that that it has. And yeah. you know, this is this is a, a drama that I would definitely point to anyone who this year that that would ask me, you know, give me a good example of an independent film. And and this is one of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it meandered a little bit. I think it went on a little bit too long. I got a little bored in some yeah, place. And, and like you said, the, the story is somewhat disjointed. I, I don't know yeah. that I necessarily followed the fantasy story that was yeah. being told. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah. but what it does is it it evokes the emotions that it needs to invoke. Yeah. And that's what you know, essentially that's what movies do. They they yeah. they they draw you in, they connect with you, and they make you feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So based on uh, just your love for the film, the the beauty, the the the, the emotions it evokes, uh, I'll say you gave it an eight. I did. Yeah. I did. I think you gave it an eight too. I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. I mean, this is a movie to stand behind, and yeah. And say, look, uh, if you want to try something new, something different, uh, an independent film, um, this is certainly a good one to to view. So with that, um, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below about what you thought of The Place of No Worlds. Go out and see it. Um, let us know what you thought. And with that, let's get out of here.